always nice to come after both French uh, and, and, and the commission and my chairman that has nicely laid out the challenges for us um, So we'll, and, and what we need to deliver on. Anyway, so dear members of the EuroHPC Joint Undertaking Governing Board, dear Praise members, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very delighted to be here in Paris with France, uh, when, while France holds the presidency of the Council of the European Union. And it is really with great pleasure uh, that I'm here with all of you today in person as after such a long period of, of remote working and video calls. And, and while uh, it has been mentioned that, and it is correct, the joint undertaking was stood up four years ago, autonomy came uh, in the middle of uh, the pandemic. So in September 2020 was when me and my team, we started working autonomously and we are very much born out of um, the COVID situation. So I must admit, with, I am very much looking forward to this event and to get to meet as many of you as possible in 3D. Um, and I know that that goes for my team as well. The annual EuroHPC Summit Week has become a much awaited annual event, bringing together key European HPC stakeholders from providers to scientific and industrial users to policymakers. The Summit Week is not only an important moment to showcase the latest achievements in European supercomputing, but it's also an opportunity to reflect all together on the best way to tackle both current and future challenges of, in HPC. Since the last edition of the Summit Week, a lot has happened in European supercomputing and some great opportunities have opened up on our continent, notably thanks to everyone involved in the European High Performance Computing Joint Undertaking. Thanks to the Joint Undertaking and the participating states, the computing power available in Europe has significantly increased with four new supercomputers now up and running in just the last year. Vega in Slovenia, Melixina in Luxembourg, Carolina in Czech Republic, and Discover in Bulgaria. These systems are now available to all fields of science, industry, and the public sector through open calls. They're driving innovation, powering research, and supporting the digital sovereignty of Europe. And on top of this, they all rank amongst the world's most powerful supercomputers. These are only the very first milestones in our ambition to lead the way in European supercomputing. And the outlook for the future of European computing power is promising. Lumi, for instance, is the first EuroHPC pre access scale system to become operational. It is located in Finland, and even though Lumi is currently only partially operational, it already ranks 76th place on the top 500 list of the world's most powerful supercomputers. Once fully operational later this year, Lumi will be amongst the world's fastest supercomputers uh, with a GPU partition whose expected performance will exceed 380 petaflops. In addition to this, three more EuroHPC supercomputers are on the way. Leonardo in Italy, Vitalian in Portugal, and Marinostrum 5 in Spain. When all eight EuroHPC supercomputers are online, we can expect a staggering 875 petaflops of computing power to be available for Europe. We will present all of these available EuroHPC computing resources, as well as give more details on our access policy during the power parallel sessions this afternoon. Over the last year, the joint undertaking has also launched a number of new research and innovation projects in education, microprocessors, and a broad range of applications, boosting the digital sovereignty of Europe and supporting, in particular, greener computing. Here I very much welcome the importance of the energy transition and climate change issues in the program of this summit week, as these topics are critical for both the world and the future of supercomputing. This is why one of the missions of the, of the joint undertaking is to pursue a more sustainable HPC infrastructure. The joint undertaking is therefore procuring supercomputing systems while taking into consideration energy efficiency and environmental sustainability. 
This includes systems using low power technology and dynamic power savings or reuse techniques like advanced cooling and heat recycling. But HPC is not limited to machines. In order to have, thriving, uh, in order to have a thriving and world-leading HPC industry, we also need to invest in our people. And this is one of the joint undertaking's priorities going forward. The joint undertaking is proud to have re recently announced that applications for students for the forthcoming winter term of EU masters for HPC have opened. The first pan-European masters program in, Euro in HPC. Thanks to a, thanks to a coordinated colloquium uh, bringing together major players in the HPC education, including universities, supercomputing centers, but also industry, this unique master's program will provide European students with, a dis with distinct qualifications and outstanding career prospects in, a rapidly expanding, in the rapidly expanding field of HPC. With this master's program, we will train the next generation of HPC experts in Europe. A dedicated parallel session tomorrow afternoon involving several partners from this important project will present this innovative program to you in greater detail. Over the last year, the joint undertaking has also launched our first quantum computing initiative. The project called High Performance Computing and Quantum Simulator Hybrid, or just H HPCQS, has the objective of integrating quantum simulators into already existing super, uh, European supercomputers. Hybrid computing will be critical for the future. By blending the best of quantum and classical HPC technologies, we will unleash new innovative potential and prepare Europe for the post-exascale era. I very, I'm very much looking forward to following the different discussions on quantum computing which are planned during this uh, summit week. One of the parallel sessions moderated by the joint undertaking tomorrow afternoon will tackle the future of exascale uh, computing architectures, including quantum computing and hybrid computing. Last but not least, one of the most important milestones for our joint undertaking over the last year has been the adoption of the new EU regulation, providing the EuroHPC joint undertaking with a budget of around eight uh, 7 billion uh, euros for the period 21 to 27. With this budget, the joint undertaking will further increase the overall computing power in Europe, not only with the, acquisi not only with the acquisition of additional mid-range uh, systems, but also uh, with the first European exascale supercomputers. The joint undertaking will also support the development of the first supercomputers capable of using the properties underlying quantum mechanics and further solidifying Europe's place in the as a global leader in HPC. We will also continue to support the development of technologies and applications by supporting in innovation via co-design. This will underpin a European supercomputing ecosystem and a supply chain that will reduce Europe's dependency on foreign computing technology. The joint undertaking will also exploit the synergies of HPC and artificial intelligence, big data and cloud technologies. And we will continue our efforts to widen the use of HPC to a large number of public and private users wherever they are located in Europe. We will also continue to support the development of key HPC skills, education and training for Europe's uh, science and industry. And finally, through this new EU regulation, the joint undertaking will exploit strategic research and innovation partnerships in HPC with third countries, including facilitating access for researchers to Euro HPC resources and co-development of HPC applications. I'm so looking forward to discussing further these new missions with you, uh, with you all during, these, uh, during the sessions which focus on the joint undertaking and which will take place this afternoon in this auditorium. To conclude, I'd like to, pray, I'd like to thank Praise and ETP for HPC for the huge work they've put into the organization of this latest edition of the Summit Week. In, co in coordination, of course, with our local host for the Summit Week, Jensi. 
Many thanks to you all for having taken the time to join us, and I wish you all a wonderful summit week. Thank you very much. <laughs>